here I'm going to show you how to make a VLOOKUP date picker and this will be a fun one. So here we have some dates and some VLOOKUPs down here to return a value. Now let's choose another date and another month and how about even another day. And there we go. But this is so much more than what you just see right here because look at how many days we have right here. 31. Now what if we go and change 2019 to 2020 and a month to February? How many days do we have now? 29 with no additional spaces down here. How about we go for 2019 again? February now has 28 days. And this is what's going to make this so much fun. And what I show you here will work with any type of lookup. As well, we're going to make it so the years will update every year. So this year it goes to 2022, next year to 2023, and so on. Now, make sure to download this file so you can follow along. Subscribe, like, and hit the bell icon so you can follow everything. The more of you that do that, the more tutorials I can make. And now it's time to lift the veil and see what we've got here. So let's unhide a bunch of columns. And this is going to be our helper data. Now for the most part, this stuff does not need to be on the same worksheet, but everything will be on the same worksheet here just to make it a little bit easier to follow. And what we've got here is the data that's going to actually build the drop-down menus or lists over here. And then this is how I'm going to explain how we build it because the day function, it's going to be rather interesting. But before we get to this stuff, let's make sure that we are on the same page for the lookups. It does require a little bit of effort to get it to be happy. So let's zoom in and do that first. The raw data is a very basic data here with four columns, and the date is in the left so that we can use it as a lookup value. Now, you'd probably use an index match for this, but this tutorial is going to be complex enough. So we're going to stick with the VLOOKUP, so I just put the date column in the left, even though it's usually not going to be there. And I'm going to put links to a bunch of my other tutorials that show you many additional things, including index match, in the description for this video. So if you want to learn how to do that, make sure you check those out. Now, let's go ahead and get these lookups out of the way. So here we want to make it so that the user can very nicely select everything. And now we could make the month an actual number. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 12. But that's no fun. So here we're going to use text and then two numbers for this. And we have to get that into a format that we can use for a date lookup. Now, if you are not aware... I will quickly show you what a date really is in Excel. So select a cell with a date and go here and set it to a general format. And we're going to get the date serial number. So we need to take our three separate date elements and make it so that that can be matched up with this number. So how do we do that? We have the wonderful date function. You put in a year you put in a month and you put in a day and you get a date and it is an actual date. So we can use this to match a value in our lookup table and we can go like this and go like this and we have a date, but we cannot go like this. So we need to make February a number. And for that, we have a very nice function, the date value function. Converts a date in the form of text to a number that represents the date in Microsoft Excel date time code. Basically, we're going to get this text and make it an actual date. So, date value. How do we do that? Well, we have to make it look like a date. So, we select the cell, but if I now close it up, it's not going to work. So, we have to give it at least a day. So let's go ampersand and concatenate a day at the end of it. So it will then be given to the date value function as February 1st. And then we get the date serial format. And if you want to see what that is, go to home and switch it up to be a date. And it will just use the current year for that. But we want a month. 
We don't want the full date. All we want is the month. We don't care about the year. We don't care about the day. We just want this guy to be a number. So we need to add another function, the month function. So month, surround that guy, enter. And it's still in the date time format. So don't let that freak you out. Just switch him back to general. There we go. And now we have a number. So what do we do? Well, we grab this guy, copy it. And we go here, paste it in, enter. And now we have a date. And it should work for whatever we put in here. Perfect. So now we have the lookup value and it is all of this. Please build your complex formulas in pieces like this. It will make it so much easier. So we just grab that guy and let's go ahead and build a VLOOKUP equals VLOOKUP. Paste in the lookup value, comma. For table array, let's go and select our table. And if you renamed your table, which is what I usually advise, it would be very easy to type the name of that table, but I did not do that in this case. So that's okay. Table array. Now, what do we want to get? Let's go for the order number in this instance. So comma, column index number is two. That's the next argument for the VLOOKUP, and we can see the VLOOKUP here in the formula bar. And the final argument, range lookup, we're going to go for exact match, so make that a false. And hit enter, and we have nothing found. So let's go ahead and put a value in there that can be found. How about January, and not yet, maybe 23rd and 2020-2019. And there we go. Now, this is the final VLOOKUP. Let me go ahead and actually pull this guy into a cell that's a little bit away, so it's a little bit easier to see. This is the final VLOOKUP. And you can see here that the actual VLOOKUP is perhaps the easiest part of this. But what we have is one big complex lookup of value. Then we have a reference to where all of the data is that we would like to look up. Then the column index number of two, and then false for an exact match. And table one is just the name of the table in the raw worksheet. And now let's go ahead and make it so that when there is no match, we don't get an NA error. That is very easy. You just put if error and go to the end, comma, value if error, no value. Much nicer than NA. And now let's go ahead and make this return. There we go, no value or not found, whatever you would like. But now let us grab this guy and let's finalize the VLOOKUP and I will show you an interesting little trick. So here is a nice working VLOOKUP, but we want multiple VLOOKUP formulas here. And it's kind of annoying to have to copy and then paste and copy and paste in every single cell and make a change. So let's make it so that we can put this guy right here and copy it to the right and it will update to pull in the next column from the lookup table. It's a really cool thing. So for our lookup value cell references, Click them and hit F4 to put dollar signs around them so that they will not update when we move the formula around. If you formalize this even more, you'd probably name these ranges and then you wouldn't have to do that, but that's okay. So now we have references that won't update when we copy it, but what about the column here? Use the column function and just put A1 in there and it will return one because cell A1 is in column one. Do not use dollar signs around it. And then when we copy this to the right, it will reference B1 and return two, and then C1 and return three. So if I hit F9 right now, you can see it will return one. And we back that up and now we are good to go. Hit enter and 
Well, let's make it so it returns a value first. It will be more interesting. And let's format this guy as a date. And now all we have to do is grab it and copy it to the right. And fix this guy that should not be a date. And there we go. That little trick with the column is a great trick. I really, really like it. It's really nice to make your formulas dynamic. So here we have A1, and here we have B1, and then we'll have C1 and D1. And at this point, you have got a robust VLOOKUP function that can return dates from tables. And in part two, we are going to cover all of this stuff over here. So everything that allows you to make the drop-down menus here dynamic.